All right, welcome to the Art Casters, episode three hundred and sixty-five. We're uh, we're joined by a special guest. Um, you guys might recognize this character from Path of the Pale Rider, um, who we had Lori Calcaterra on before. But we'll we'll wait to get into the topic and uh, all of that uh, before we kind of get into it and dig into it and introduce our guest. So um, I'm Joshua Kemble. Uh, if you haven't noticed too, by the way, um, Scott and Corey are gone. I know that a lot of people are probably aware of Scott's latest video. So I wanted to reassure people that Scott is still planning on being part of the art casters. Um, and so don't worry, him and Corey didn't just quit. We had a really vicious breakup in the garage and we're starting new bands. Um, no, that didn't happen. So we're going to be continuing art casters as usual um, with them hosting but since they're both at creative south um i have some really awesome uh pinch hitters uh playing uh playing the game so um which i think is baseball but i don't watch sports so that's a tough one to um understand maybe it's anyhow okay let's continue <laughs> so um so anyhow uh so this stream also marks a really cool thing before we introduce everybody it's episode 365 that means every single day of the year you could watch an art casters episode and it will fill the entire year so i encourage you guys i have a playlist uh scott circland has a much more completest playlist um of all of the art casters episodes uh so give give the art casters some love and check out uh the 365 we've done and with that being said, um, I'll just say where to find me and then we'll introduce everybody. So uh, you're on my channel. You know where to find me. If you haven't, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications when we're about to go live and uh, pick up Jacob's apartment and two stories. And uh, and uh, because of our guest as well, um, I'm going to be saying it, it, before you pick up two stories or Jacob's apartment, pick up these books. Um, all right. Uh, our co-host, our guest co-host uh, uh, is uh, Jim Luhan, Jim, animator extraordinaire. Where can uh, everybody find your work and all that fun stuff? Um, for a second, I thought our guest was dead and or asleep. <laughs> but okay, um, you can find my stuff at jimluhan.com. And that's uh, a lot of my animated films are there and you can check them out there. Um, you can check me out on Patreon at jimluhan at patreon.com. And uh, and Corey Kerr, C Corey Kerr. By the way, if you would like to see Corey Kerr or Scott Circlin again alive, you need to send me a hundred thousand dollars cash, untraceable, or else. Yeah, not a threat, but it's a promise. Right. And with that, speaking of threats, who's this guy uh, right underneath you? Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, we have this wonderful comic called D versus M, which is uh, kind of like if you took uh, the X-Files and told them like as if they were a Tarantino movie. Now, that um, doesn't stand for Danish versus Mexicans. Because, no. OK, no. <laughs> I was going to sue because I have a thing I'm working on. I know. No, I don't want to. I don't want to step on your toes with that one. I know <laughs> you're deep into the Danish versus Mexicans lore. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. No, yes, I do the indie comic series D versus M. There are two uh issues out currently, D versus M 1975 and D versus M 1997. And wouldn't you know, the third one is just about done. D versus M 1979, which should be out available for you to buy in the next few weeks, maybe month at the most. I haven't placed the print order yet, I, but I've, I've got it right here. I finished drawing it. I have all my pages and this handy dandy binder right here. I've got to give it a once over. I've got to do a cover. I've got to do an introduction. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. I wanted to do the slow please. clap. No, I mean a little bit more. A little bit, but please. Oh. That's, yeah. Um. But if you'd like to hear more about how this is coming and how soon you'll be able to get your grubby little paws on D vs. M 1979, the third installment in D vs. M, what completes part one of D vs. M, the six-issue series, tune into my live stream here on the YouTubes Saturday morning. 
uh, you can find me here. Uh, search for Gary Hodges. You'll know when you find me. It's a little icon with a dinosaur eating an alien. Or you can check me out on Instagram at Dinosaurs vs. Mars Bots. Awesome. And there's a link below as well in the show notes to Jim, to Gary, to uh, Jude St. Clair. Um, and uh, so, so, uh, so Jude... Um, <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, dude, party life partner. Where, where can every? <laughs> I'm, gonna my, I'm gonna correct my name here. Hold on. Where... Wait, you're, uh, okay. this is not Jude. I look. I only agreed to come on because I thought I'd be interviewing Jude Saint Clair. Hey, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, We're gonna ask a, a lot of week. questions about his uh, his foray been... into the uh, the fight with a bear. Um, an undead bear, but uh, yeah, it's been a long week of killing zombies, I tell you. Yeah. Uh, All right. So as we're we'll just now, take off this ridiculous hat and put on a more appropriate one. By the way, by zombies he means pedestrians. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. I love it. <laughs> how he rolls. That's, yeah, that's true. That is true. Oh, it's Bing. Or that's how they rolled before. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so uh, so Paul. Um, Paul Pate is our guest. Uh, I've been really excited to have Paul back. I've been looking for a time to get him in because um, I have just really been enjoying the hell out of uh, the Detective Perez series. I think they're great graphic novels. Um, there's two out currently. Um, there is <laughs> Welcome to Rust City overwhelming. and the uh, Rust City stabber yes. um and uh these are two and he's working on the third in this series and i am geeked out about it like uh like as if i'm awaiting a great new episode of columbo um, <laughs> that's right it's like it, it's a good just detective fiction story um they're mysteries um they, they're just really well crafted and i have never written a mystery um, I haven't really known a lot of people who've written mystery comics or detective comics. And so I think that'll be a really good um, topic. I don't think we've addressed that yet on art casters. So don't forget um, Paul's first book available at <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Paul, I feel like the end with Dr. Manhattan kind of leaving the earth made a profound statement about, you know, who we all are as people. I mean, yeah. how did you? Was, I was drunk when I wrote it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, it was quite a debut. Quite yeah. a debut. Yeah, that's true. I don't it really remember. So, not as much frontal, but some <laughs> would have been okay. But... So, so deep cut uh, with uh, for those of you who aren't in the know, but like, there's this guy Alan Moore who's walking around saying that he wrote Watchmen, and if you ever see Alan, just be like, we know Paul Pate is the yeah. creator we know yeah. we know the truth you yeah. keep claiming about it or complaining Listen, about the hbo series i'm not even hard. worried about i'm not even worried about it it's just like yeah. not a big yeah. deal to me yeah. you know yeah. you know what if if Paul, where that came from if paul, paul ever meets paul him you're just gonna look at him and tell him watch man I, i'm yeah. you know what i had to say that you know what i had to say to alan more <laughs> alan less <laughs> oh man <laughs> So, is this um, what we're doing as guest hosts? We're going to start a feud with Alan Moore. Is that? Know, that we start over with it, Alan? No. Um, <laughs> we are we actually straight? Are we live? Is this what's <laughs> happening? Right? Totally. This is not the real show. Be like this all night long. <laughs> it's like so. Um. Anyhow, uh, enough about Alan Moore. <laughs> yeah. That chump. <laughs> what we need is like switchblade combs, um, so you can be like. So anyhow. Uh, so all right guys um Paul, on a more serious note um how did can you kind of explain the character of De detective perez just as a character before we get into the stories because he's okay. going to be repeating yeah. and then also um how you came up with him so like okay. that that's like what where he arose from in your head like um yeah, yeah I mean, so I tell think, us uh... I think I'll start with like you had mentioned, like influences, you know. So he's Detective Lorenzo Perez. He's a detective on the police force at Rust in Rust City, a fictional city. Um, so I, you know, a, a lot. It's based on um, a few influences, I'll say. 
Uh, one is uh, Homicide Life on the Streets. I don't know if you guys remember that TV show, but the yeah. same people that made The Wire mm -hmm. made Homicide Life on the Streets, and I was a huge fan of that show. And uh, it was, it's, it's a show based in Baltimore, but um, I I lived in Flint, Michigan, for a couple of years, and uh, it was it's it's a pretty rough city, and uh, so and it made a big impression upon me. I only lived there for a couple of years, but it made a big impression on me, and so I. You know, I uh, just, you know, they say, write what you know. So I stuck my detective in that city and and uh, started started from there. And then I read, uh, some years went by and I read a, a graphic novel from a guy, excuse me, named um, Tim Broderick. And I, he's got a book here. You can see it. And so, Paul, I, I think I used to, I'm not kidding. I think I used to work with Tim Broderick. Really? The, yeah, the graphic novelist? The 90s. If it's the same guy I'm thinking of, yeah. Get out of here. That's wild. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can see, I mean, if I open this up and show you some of the artwork, it's a he influenced me big time. And he, he one of his big influences is Dashiell Hammett. Like, you know, like the Maltese Falcon, that kind of hard-boiled, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. detective. So, um he, this was his second book, I believe, and this is his uh, <clears throat> first book. So, you know, I looked at these books and uh, and I, I kind of envisioned my book to be like this, you know. So I, I think that's one an important thing as you embark upon a, you know, this my first book took me like two and a half years to, to create. And when you embark, <laughs> Gary, you know, uh, when you yeah. embark on a, a journey like that, um, well, Josh, too, good grief. Um, you know, you, it's important to have in mind where you're headed, I think, because otherwise yeah. you're just going to be meandering and it's so easy, you know, to get lost. So anyway, those that's how, how, how I kind of, I like uh, uh, Dashiell Hammett. I like um, my favorite author is uh, Walter Mosley. I don't know nice. if you're familiar with Walter Mosley, but he, he writes about L.A. and but the hard-boiled detective type story back in the 50s and 60s and that kind of thing. So yeah. I love that like, stuff. I like Law and Order, you know, those shows ripped from ripped from the headlines, you know. So I like to start my novels off with an article, a news article or something, you know, or based on a true story, stuff like that. So um, I needed a main character and. And I just came up with a detective. Uh, there's a uh, oh, an actor named Clark Johnston, and he he played a uh, he played on Homicide: Life on the Streets. He was also in The Wire. He's a director. I kind of fashioned my my main character, Detective Perez, after Clark Johnston and my friend Al. <laughs> so it's just sort of a you know Al uh, Jim. So anyway, yeah, that and that's so that's where he came, I came up with him, and I I like to get to, I'm I think I'm a little bit different than like say Gary I like watching your streams and you talk about your characters, and you know like everything in and out the ins and outs you know the whole backstory. Mm -hmm. I like to get to know my characters as the story goes on. You know what I yeah. mean? So sure. I don't know everything about them and, until I need to know kind of in the story. You know what I mean? So I do. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. yeah, I like to throw all my characters in, kind of get a you know, short idea about who the characters are and then get to know them as the story develops. So so anyway, I hope that answers the question. No, that's, that's a wonderful answer. Um, so, okay, so Detective Perez is kind of in this city. Um, there's an interesting relationship with uh, now if i'm remembering this wrong paul you got to correct me oh, but i think it's like his well i don't want to give it away um he has a relationship with uh a, a, a like a close relationship with uh, a guy who runs like a a small part of like the organized crime in the area yeah it's so actually it's like, his cousin yeah okay it's cousin yeah and and there so there's this interesting dynamic kind of throughout where you're kind of having this um like juxtaposition of like the 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 guy who's chosen the life of crime and the guy who's chosen like the life of you know a police officer and they kind of bounce off each other yeah. um and it, it like as like a sub 
line throughout the plot. Um, yeah. So even that like dynamic and stuff, uh, how did you develop that? Like in, in this, like what was the impetus to kind of developing that kind of arc, like in this, within the story? I mean, you know, I, I don't like a story. I don't like like a good guy and a bad guy kind of story. That to me is a little bit dull. You yeah. Know, like, you know, it's a, it's a more um, nuanced or, you know, the, what do you call it? The, the archetypal, um, anti-hero or whatever you know so everybody and and actually so to kind of go back i mean i you know i went to college and i took i took i wasn't doing too well so i took a couple years off and lived in flint for two years after that you know i finished college and then i, I lived a pretty quick life you know i you know i live in the suburbs and work in you know corporate america and uh so i'm not like if from the streets or anything like that. You know, I don't know shit about the streets, but I did live from the street, a street. Yeah. You know, but when I lived in Flint for two years, I worked in like bars and restaurants and it was, it was like a hustle. And I knew the, all the hustlers in the city, you know, and back then those people, they didn't have a lot of money or they, you know, sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't, you know, they were all hustlers and they were, um, you know, it was hard. It was, it was a hard city and a hard life. Yeah. And, uh, but they were some of the smartest people that I've ever met since, you know, n no doubt. And then also, you know, now that I'm like in corporate America, and everybody's really nice. And, you know, I, you know, how's that project coming along? Oh, great. Let's touch base later. You know, all that crap. <laughs> but some of those people are the most savage, you know, yeah. fuckers that you know from that put the people in the city to shame i mean when it comes time to lay people off all of a sudden the backstabbing starts and everything you know what i mean yeah so that juxtaposition of of uh life where you know the environment is different but people are the same you know there's and we all have we all have the ruthless side in us. We all have the, the nice side. We all have the side that you want to do the right thing. And so I did, to me that that kind of stuff I find interesting, and I wanted to kind of include that in the story. So, so Edie has a good question, Josh. Oh, yes, I I, have, I I also have Edie's question. Yeah, which it's is a, uh, let's see here. Are your stories character driven then instead of plot driven? I, you know that's. I don't know. <laughs> I don't Come know. I'll try. <laughs> I, I, I think there's maybe or... another way at it. What What do you start with? Like, so you've already you've got Detective Press, but when you think of all the other characters that appear in one of these, right? You come up with them first and just sort of wind them up and let them do their thing, or do you start it thinking like, I think the story in this one is going to be something about this. And you yeah, that's like where I that. start. Yeah, I start okay. with, you know, I'm going to have like a gang war. Or something okay. Like that. Yeah. I want to draw a map of the city and see where all the gangs are. And, you know, there's just some, yeah. some random idea like that, just a kernel of something. But then from there, I, I create a bunch of characters and then just toss them in there, mix it all up and see what happens, you know. Yeah. And then start writing and start writing. And then to me, the writing part of it is is brutal. I mean, that's the hardest part for me. It's, it's, I, 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 uh, man, this last one I wrote, one that I'm working on now. I mean, I wrote it like three or four times from front to back, you know. They are, and this is coming from someone who also has the curse of writing long books, enormously <laughs> long. Yeah. Like, this is like, I, especially just finishing mine, I was reviewing yours again, like, just to kind of remind myself. And I was thinking, this is almost giving me PTSD looking at <laughs> yeah. all of this. Not a, this is not a small achievement, you know, yeah. just doing these. So yeah. how, do you have a script when you're doing Yeah, 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 I've got the script. I mean, I don't want to, that's one thing, you know, before I finish my first one, I started and stopped so many times. I'd get yeah. 30 pages in and be like, oh, this is shit, and stop and be done, you know. Well, I don't want to do that anymore. You know what I mean? When I draw something, I want it to be kind of pretty close to 
your what I need. So your books, they are so big, but yet they are so little. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this. <laughs> so I like well, the, I, I uh, asked you, I think I asked you this. I know the answer, but it's interesting. As we get older and we age and become old, decrepit men. <laughs> um, the, have you found that reading your own books is difficult because they are because you, oh, the, I wanted to make a book size too. No, but, my actually my eyes are are great close. I can see small things really well. It's when it's beyond the screen right here. It's like I'm blind as a bat, so I don't have any trouble reading small stuff. But. And your third book's gonna your third book's gonna fit in the the case. It'll it'll be a match. Yeah, book. just so it'll be just like it, that. Yeah. Is it Similar. a trilogy, Paul? Uh, no, no. They're, they're, I think they're all standalone stories. But like, like the man—that's that co his cousin, the man. Yeah. He, he's going to be in the third book. Okay. Um, uh, I would love to do another one where I have my character Bubba from the first book. I did a, I did a uh, animated story where he was killing vampires. Oh, what animation? The animation? Bubba, the, Bubba the Vampire Killer. So. Tell us more about this animation. I don't. <laughs> You can find it at paulpate.com. It's on or Paul Pate Animation on YouTube. Uh, Paul, I had awesome. a question. Um, why do you hate animation now? <laughs> what did it ever do to you? <laughs> I feel like I'm on to, between two ferns. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. Actually, I think that's my segue. Uh, so it looks like you wrote your first book. Then you wrote the next Detective Prez like a couple years later. Yeah. And now the third one, it's like nine yeah. years later, something yeah, like yeah. that. Man, you've done, so your, I was, you've done your homework. I, look, hey, <laughs> I'm hoping just to muscle the hard years, spot right? out completely. I'm hoping just to kind of just listen in Jim's basement. Listen, Gary Hodges, just, back off. That's right. <laughs> so, well, what like, I was curious. So, your mother said that in kindergarten. And yeah. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> Tell me, I understand you won the science fair sophomore year. Yeah. Tell us um, more about this hobo you killed. <laughs> what I was curious about was that's a big gap. Yeah. Had yeah. you been done with Detective Prez and you knew you'd come back someday and you just didn't have a time like frame for it? Yeah, or so. like in between you did Samurai Tai, you did animation, you were doing other things. Why like why are we back on Detective Prez? Would did just did the idea come where you're like, okay, now I'm ready? Did yeah, you get I mean, over having to do two giant books and you finally have recovered? Like what was the thing? Yeah, well, yeah. So my actually the when I set out to do the first one, I had it in my head that I would do three. And that okay. I, by the third one, I would be good at it with my idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then yeah. I may try to pursue something more um you know lucrative or something i don't know what the hell i thought was going to happen but uh so uh but after i did the first two i mean i was like it was so hard you know yeah. that uh that i was kind of done with it for a while but since then um i've you know done a lot and a lot of art done animation and other smaller comic books and uh so now for me to bite off this graphic novel, it's not overwhelming to me at all. You know, I mean, I can see a year from now or, you know, from the front to back a year and I can see the beginning and the middle and the end. And so it's well, the, very, the surprise ending on this page right here. Uh, I... <laughs> Just um, ignore <laughs> the fact that Jim is here. Would you agree that? Animation is nothing compared to comics. <laughs> I mean, like, well, well, it's yeah. unusually difficult. Would you agree with that? Yeah, we've got two graphic novelists here and one animator. So, yeah, <laughs> I would have to agree with you, Kerry. Yeah, yeah, graphic novels are easily the hardest art form of all time, yeah. including, you know, yeah. even if you wanted to like do a microscopic carving of, you know, but you're not you're not biased on that or anything, are you, Josh? Josh? Oh no, not at all, not at all. This is just, <laughs> this is just coming from an outsider perspective. Is a completely agreed upon yeah. position. Yeah. Everybody yeah. understands. It's, it's fact. like I think I learned everybody that in elementary that. school that it's easily the hardest form. Everybody I mean, knows. everybody knows that. All, all the time. Experts. Everybody knows it. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> the greatest art form ever. <laughs> we miss it. Pe- people we have said. It. People have said. <laughs> Uh, so how long? What is your what is your page rate drawing wise? Like when do you yeah. know? Do you $1, know thousand dollars. So by the way, before, <laughs> I meant more before, time. Yeah. Like how 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 long? Do you know when you'll be done drawing the third book? Yeah, that's yeah, a good question. Yeah, yeah, by the end of this year. By the end of this year. Yeah, like I'm oh, wow. I'm, in, I'm 26 pages. I think I'm 26 pages in. If you follow Paul Pate Comics on Instagram, you can follow yes. along with my progress. There you so, go. Um, so, yeah, so I'm 26 pages in, so that's about one eighth of the way, you know. That's so. that's amazing. So, how many pages are you able to do? Like like a page a day? Um, yeah, I mean a page, uh, a quick page would be in two hours. Um, a long page might take three, three or four. Why are you that's crying, Gary? Gary? Why are you crying? I, I, I <laughs> I'm shaking. I just can't even. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. I think, <laughs> Josh is probably in the cell. I think Josh actually had a small stroke. Oh yeah, yeah, entirely. I actually just I well, I, I mean, you know, the art anymore. This is just an AI generated version uh, <laughs> that I subbed in so I could have a heart attack on the floor. Right. No, um, Paul, like t- as a as a testament to the power of these books, though, it's like the the art is just completely consistent. Like I didn't feel like you know a book this length, especially the first one. You uh, think I I'd, did better at it? <laughs> Well, well, no. What I what I what I'm surprised by is the fact that it remains consistent. Because a lot of people's first graphic novels that I will see will be like really solid at the beginning and kind of wane off as it goes. Because oh, really? the person's just like, Bleh. like I'm done. <laughs> um, so like there will be like extensive detail on the first few you know pages yeah. and it drops off yeah. and stuff. There's no yeah. moment that I noticed like I, of I, that. I, I think I, ended up, I had a lot of stops and starts and. So by the time I worked on that one, I had a kind of an idea of the style that I wanted to do or that I could do, and so. So, yeah. I'm curious about like when you're writing a mystery, um, you know, like what do you feel are like the core elements of that? Because I, it's funny; these are two very opposite stories. I mean, one is very supernatural, and then yeah. one is based very much in like the real world. Uh, yeah. But they both feel like they're in the same world, yeah. and, and and it's like so. I'm I'm and they both are great page turners where there's just suspense and mystery throughout. Mm-hmm. So, what are there things you're consciously doing to kind of build suspense and create the page turn? I guess in a mystery. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's first of all, it's just like shit that I like. You know, that's that's it. You know, like put some chick in there, you know, and you know what I mean? Uh, you know, have, have a rough, you know, some motorcycles and guns and car chases, you know what I mean? So uh, that, that's the main thing. It's just like shit that I like. And then, but yeah, then try to, I try to, I try to uh, imagine kind of reading it and I want the reader to kind of go like this, you know, you want them to kind of build up some stuff, build up s- some stuff, and then have something happen, and then you you know have it calm down and build up some more and build up some more, and you know have something s- and surprising and and uh, and like like for this li- re- the, the this third one, I wanted th- this is my idea. I want to have this character that you just hate and by the end you get to kill them and then that's it you know what i mean <laughs> so it's like you feel good reading it you know that's pretty much it spoiler <laughs> alert yeah <laughs> um well if i can achieve that you know then that, it worked if I, oh, you you write a full right. script for each book yeah the, all the full script before you even thumbnail yeah it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to redraw shit, you know. Wow. I don't want to. I don't want to change a plot point at the end and then have to come back and redraw stuff in the beginning. So when you're writing a, a page, do you have to picture how much dialogue, like this, is going to go in the first box? This yeah, gonna... yeah. I write it frame by frame, like. It, but see, my books is my books pretty simple though. Like each page has three frames or four. 
except when I deviate from that. And I deviate from that when I want it to be that suspenseful moment, you know? Yeah. So on your, um, on your scripts, do you write like frame one? Frame one. And then frame two. And then frame eight. one, dash, and like, here's what, describe the action. And then if I have dialogue in it, I'll say Detective Perez and what he says underneath that frame one. But then like a lot of the frames don't have any description of what's going on because it's just two characters talking. And then I just get to draw. So it's kind of, you know, you write it out, but then I leave I leave plenty of room for impro improvisation. And the improvisation with the, the drawing? Like, so yeah, you, you right. have choices when you sit down that day. Right. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you got to keep it fun. And, yeah. Well, yeah. And I don't do my pencils too, too detailed because I, I like doing inks. It's, inks are funner. I want to show these real quick just so people can kind of see a little bit sure, of yeah. what we're talking about with the process. So, um, yeah, so this is great, by the way. This is a, a, a police chase or a car chase, right? This is based on a true story. Okay, see, it's a U-Haul truck. I got it called U-Hum. So I was at work one day. I'm talking to this guy. He lives in an apartment complex. He's working. It, and he's like, hold on a minute. So... What happened was uh, he, he left, he, got, he was gone for like 15, 20 minutes or something. He came back and told the story of what happened. And then what happened was this kid came in the neighbor or in the apartment complex, jumped. They were like loading a U-Haul to move, somebody was. This kid jumped in the U-Haul and took off and then went and led it through, uh, led it through a police chase throughout the city. And yeah, and this U-Haul was like shit flying out the back. So you can, that's what this is. You can see on the bottom frame there, that's the U-Haul driving down the street, shit flying out the back and the cops chasing them. It's really happening. Like, so I, and then a little, little while later after that, I saw like they went live on, somebody went live on Instagram and you can see the U-Haul flying down the street with the, the thing dangling out the back, you know, the little ramp. <laughs> it was crazy. So anyway, I was like, man, I got to put that in my comic book. That's wild. So. That's great. That's also like I think a good thing to do. Even like at, you know, I don't think a lot of people <laughs> stealing U hauls. Yeah, exactly. I don't think a lot of people advise. think about how smart it is to steal a U haul and get in a police chase. <laughs> now, um, good point. Fair, fair point. But um, no, it's uh, it's just like I think a good way of approaching fiction where you're pulling elements of reality, like you've described. Right. You know, um, like you know, living in Flint. And so there's a lot of elements of Flint, Michigan, like throughout yeah. this, it definitely feels like Detroit Flint kind of synergy, like the, the yeah. um, and, and, and yet it's its own city too. And similarly, like you've got this like story, you know, that a, like a friend at work told you, and it's like, that's become <laughs> part of, yeah. part of the thing. Yeah. I, I feel like we're kind of collectors of all the little, yeah, like even your description of like, well, I just put in things that I love, like car chases and guns, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think well, that's you know I, I put in shit that I hate too, though. Like, there's this guy that I used to work with named Preston. He was just him? an asshole. Oh, and no. I, I, like, I, I hope you're work. watching, Preston. We're yeah. calling you out, Preston. <laughs> You're you're going down. Okay. Preston. Uh, I didn't mean to. I was trying to full screen Paul there. You really, <laughs> so you really wanted to call out to Preston. To Preston. Right there. Yeah. So um uh so sorry. Let me get back. Well, to, to me, I mean, it's it's such a cliche, but I find it to be very true. I file this under all art is autobiographical. You know, like that. There's anything you're coming up with, you're you're choosing it because you like it or you don't like it, it reminds you of something or it's a story you saw, you know, it's all, sometimes you can't tell it's so finely blended what those original elements were, but it's all from you. It's your story. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I feel like it's like a lot, like we're all kind of writing love letters to things we like basically. Yeah. I mean, I remember my time in Flint, it was a unique time in my life and, it, and uh, you know, I wouldn't want to do it again, but um, it was just one of those things where, um, you know, it was just made a big impression on me. Is all I can say about well, it. Well, I'll tell you one thing Paul for sure likes, if you could full screen me, Josh. Oh, no. <laughs> Paul definitely really likes the near nudity. He's the king of <laughs> near nudity. Paul is the master of near nudity in comics and in real life. Yeah, I, yeah. 
Watch stand up. I'm not wearing pants. You guys want to see? Yeah, yeah uh, we're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, I have uh, actually, I think Russ, Russ City Stabber has more than near nudity. Yeah, that's true. That's nudity. true. That's actually a euphemism. Right. It's a euphemism, Gary. Russ City Stabber. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's kind of red. So I didn't I didn't expect that turn. I was thinking like, oh a little crime drama. Oh, oh yeah. the old yeah, Russ City yeah. stabber, if you get yeah. Uh -huh. He's stabbing, he's stabbing again. Stabbing like a chair. All right. That's... <laughs> All right. Now now oh. let's, let's really start the show now. Yeah. Are we live? <laughs> okay, now go live. We can go we live. live. We're ready to okay, go. Cool. Yeah. Oh this includes gosh, the free interview. This let's go live. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I, I feel like um, the the way you you craft the suspense and the way you just described that as just kind of having like 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 lower points and then high peaks of like peaks and mm -hmm. valleys basically of like yeah. building up suspense and then having action suspense action yeah. suspense action, it it does feel that way and they're really quick reads like they're actually pretty hard to put down, um, and I I've been saying this like since I picked them up where it's like. You guys should pick these books up. Yeah, I'm sending you yeah. this spike in sales. I had I like a, uh, I had to get a, I got to pay taxes on my royalties now. That's right. And you know what? It was all part of my plan. I, you thought the IRS show that I was doing with Corey Kerr was like, oh, it's the IRS. Yeah. No, really, I I work for the IRS. Hey, yeah. Josh, can you bring one of those pages up again, though? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I wanted to kind of, you were mentioning your pencils, like kind of starting off. Um, uh, let's see if I can, I'm just having boomer navigation issues here. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. There it is. Yeah. These, these are actually probably tighter pencils than I normally do. Um, I usually do it more like that top frame. Yeah. Yeah. You can see like that top frame is usually about the, you know, how I do my pencils. So you just get like the core structure in there and then do most of the work. And this, this is all done digitally, right? Or traditional. Yeah. Clip studio, clip studio paint. So my first one, I did all on typing paper with um, everybody's favorite pen, this pen right here, this flare. Oh yeah. I love those. Felt them. Felt show, show that close. Oh, to yeah. The camera. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's, that's everybody's favorite pen. Yeah. I love that. I was telling Chris Runsonman about that pen. Show the yeah. lid because it's got the little white lid. The yeah, this yeah, um, that's it's like little trademark lid. Yeah, the little mm -hmm. oh, the little the plus the sign. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah, that's, uh, like every like Lonnie Millsap. Remember talking to him? Yeah, this is my favorite pen. I'm like, yeah, my favorite pen. So I did the whole uh, first graphic novel on typing paper and uh, scanned it into the computer and then did the gray. I call it coloring, but it's just, you know, grayscale. And then I was talking to my friend, Ken Lamoog. You remember Ken, Jim? Yeah. You guys should have him on the show. He's a kid lit guy. He's awesome. Las Vegas Ken. Yes. Yeah. Ken Lamoog. Um, and he's like, man, that probably takes a long time to scan all that stuff in. I'm like, no, I got a system down. It's cool, man. But um, yeah, I, now I just do it all digitally. And Clip yeah. Studio, Clip Studio is uh, paint is designed for comics, you know. So like the word bubbles and, I mean the frames and everything. I just got like this little system down, and so that's gonna make uh, make it go a lot faster. It, it makes it much more things. enjoyable because you don't spend time like doing things like getting out the ruler. I mean, you know, this is just my for me. Yeah. So, drawing lines and you know that stuff that kind of takes the fun out of it for me you were one of the first people i know that got an ipad uh and paul uh paul and i uh our paths crossed in iowa yeah and uh, it was at a, an event for uh revengeance and bill plimpton was there <laughs> and i was i had never used an ipad that was the first time i'd ever and i was like this is incredible this is amazing so Paul, I asked Paul, Paul, just have go. We were at a comic book shop with Bill Plimpton, yeah. you remember? Yeah. And I go, Paul, just have Bill try it. He, I, he'd love it. And Bill, like Paul well, took the iPad to him and it was like giving garlic to a vampire. Bill was like, <laughs> oh, put that away from me. Yeah, he actually slapped me across the face. It was funny. So I, I, him, bitch. <laughs> I was like, oh. 
I'll never wash this face again. No, but it was he was pretty <laughs> adamant that he didn't even want yeah, to he wasn't touching. No, I thought it was cool because I had yeah. you draw a picture on my iPad. And I was like, I got a Jim Lujan yeah. original on my iPad. You know, cool. Yeah. Let me get a Bill Plimpton original too. Yeah, it wasn't happening. <laughs> yeah. So was Paul, awesome. you you've been digital since I've known you. You've been digital. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not they really. call him Bobby Digital. Yeah, Bobby. That's, a, that's a hip hop deep cut. We call yeah. him Polly Pixel around here. But. <laughs> Polly Pixel. <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds like the setup for uh, what was that guy who did the Hickory Dickory Doc jokes? That sounds like oh, it. Like nice. I'm Polly Pixel nice. and I'm gonna say something with peas. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Um, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so Paul, like, um. <laughs> there, there are like things that you'll kind of include in like backgrounds or little elements that end up being like little clues throughout the story. Uh, yeah, yeah. So how do you approach this? Like, this is always a curiosity of mine when I read a, a well crafted like mystery story where it's like, are you kind of like on page five, you drew this thing and then like 20 pages later, you're like, oh, I can bring back that thing. Or is it more <laughs> intentional? Yeah, but it's kind of like your I don't know, know man. I'm not that story. Yeah, I'm not that smart, Josh. It's it's kind of a luck, you know, or like I, I feel like the one I'm working on now, the ending. I wrote the ending and then I was like, oh, but I can do this thing, and then it'll like really, you know, it'll be like really sweet, you know. I didn't even think of the so the ending, I didn't think of it until I got to the ending, and I was like, Oh yeah, this is gonna be really juicy, you know. So that's, that that part of it is fun because you you're like you know you're kind of making it up as you go. That that's the Jim and I talked about this. You know, it's like the, the best way to 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 uh, write a story or make create something or tell a story would be just to sit down and tell it from beginning to end and have it be perfect. <laughs> you know, yeah. And you don't have to redo anything. You don't have to stutter. Or you don't have to stop. That'd be the sweetest thing. But I can't do that. You know, I'm not that smart. Right. Like Jim, I mean, he kind of, you know, he just gets going and he, you know, fly. <laughs> we were talking about flies a plane into the clouds, can't see shit. Right into the mountain. On the other side and you land, you know, and it's like, oh, that was a sweet ride. But for me, I got to sit there and rewrite stuff. And yeah, it was crazy. I wrote this one like three times. I know yeah. what's happening. I know all the events that lead up to the, the you know, the revealing the mystery and everything. But I didn't know how to tell the story. You know, it was first like I was having the main character tell it in first person and then I was having another character tell it. You know, I just went back and forth rewriting the thing. And so anyway, but I, I think what I've landed on is good. So I, I hope it, people like it, you know. But. So do you do a ton of research like my dear friends? No, 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 not at all. I mean... <laughs> I wish I was, you know, more, uh, I don't know. I never did my homework. <laughs> you know, I wish I wasn't so fucking lazy, but <laughs> especially like I want, you know, Gary and uh, Gary Hodges and Joshua Kemble. Boy, these guys work. You know, they work. So I t I'll tell you, when I was a kid, we were playing Star Wars figures. Yeah. And I would go over different friends' house and they, I noticed the way they had things set up were a lot different than the way I would play with the Star Wars <laughs> figures. <laughs> Mine usually had, you know, really sorted histories and things like that. But um <laughs> but I think it's it it still applies here because for example, Gary, I think and this is one of the reasons we get along so well is Gary and I we have totally different approaches, but we're kind of hitting the same destination, same yeah. purpose. Yeah different yeah. approaches and it's interesting because i he can't operate like i operate and i can't operate like yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's actually and and i don't know if this sounds cheesy or, or i but i mean it very genuinely i think no getting to know jim and seeing his process has uh opened my eyes to the spectrum of processes you know and, <laughs> yeah, and made me saying, realize I think if you had caught me a few years ago, I would have had very, very calcified ideas about like, this is how a process has to work to get good work. 
Yeah, yeah and, and I, I would have been fair, a little military. Fair, you you were in prison then, so. Oh, I was in prison, but <laughs> yeah. but then I got to know Jim and a few other creators, like where like uh, I was in prison as well in the yeah. chat, like people like that, where I realized like, okay, that's just my process. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, and you can yeah. like you don't need to do it this way and this way and this way to get good results. There actually is a lot of different ways to get to the same destination. And I, it's been, it's been good for me. It's been, yeah. uh, uh, education. Awesome, right? Yeah. The, in the community that there's, you know, we've built up around Joshua Kemble really is, uh, the, is you not, mean the Kremlin? Yeah. Kremlin. <laughs> and that's going to stick. Like me and Jim <laughs> were riffing on that in chats and I've been bringing it up on stream ever since the Kremlin, Kremlin. will be real. But, uh, but no, yeah, around the, the art casters, yeah. the community of uh, artists. So forever since I, I've known, I've probably known Josh. I don't know, fifty-seven years, maybe. Yeah, but, uh, going yeah. on fifty-eight. Um, no, I've known Getting Josh closer a long... to sixty-nine. You know, <laughs> there's <laughs> there's, uh, there's there's never been a time where I've known Josh where I didn't consider him very very highly elevated and professional like up here because I've never known Josh in an amateurish or beginning phase. I mean, yeah. the day I met you, you were, you were as good as you are now, or you're probably better now, but I mean, you've always operated on a high level and you have a high knowledge database because you will riff off of stuff. You'll be like, you oh, know, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. like Chagar says. And I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about, Josh? <laughs> to me, to me this, this book is a masterwork of comics. Oh, I mean, um, just uh, there's just a Josh, the tag, tag line for you. This, this book is filled with blood, sweat, and fears. Oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, I like that. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, this is deepness, you guys. This is the kind of rich content you'll get on this channel. Also, I do want to throw out there we do take super chats, so if you have <laughs> a real pressing question. Or you just want us to say something really silly, uh, please. Or if you want to fund want Scott money. and Corey's liberation from Jim's that, basement. Hey, that's hey, right. Hey, hey, I gotta, hey, I gotta guys. earn the income to pay off Jim. Uh, what people don't realize is this live stream is happening in a basement right now. I, I need to get out of here. You guys <laughs> help me by super chatting. Anyhow, I'm, um, I'm, you know I'm worth well more than fourteen million dollars already. That's true. That's <laughs> true. I checked on Google. So oh. <laughs> that is true. If you guys Google Jim Lujan's net worth, it's it's shocking. But uh, our it was down to like million. four million the other day, and I was devastated. You're, you're <laughs> like, man, I must have made some bad stock like investments. I'm this close to being homeless. It's crypto. <clears throat> you're like, oh, what am I going to do with it? only four million? Yeah. It's the last time I invest in Cirque coin. <laughs> <laughs> There's all those Lujan Lujan of teas. <laughs> I was trying to get the N in there. Well, we um, probably should have workshop that more, but I liked yeah. I liked the general gist. I like that. <laughs> so um so Paul, like so with like I I have to kind of I want to bring it back to something Gary was mentioning because I, I think it is worth highlighting. Like, first off, like um there everybody does have different approaches, but you are incredibly fast um at at creating yeah. pages like two hours for a page is insane yeah that's fast. Uh, I mean, i'm talking you know my pages are not like yours or gary's i mean yeah it's still, but it's fast but no matter impressive. what like yeah these, I, i'm i'm shocked because I've, I've seen your books and like i i wouldn't have guessed so what you're trying to ask you is near two hours a page like, what no josh way. is really trying to say is why the cocaine yeah <laughs> yeah cheers what are you on and can I have some was basically the, uh, the gist of that. But no, it was um, it was more just kind of like along with the pages and, and the speed of that. I, I think like one of the things that's remarkable about about your work um, in these books is like I, you know, I remember reading this uh, comment by where Chris Ware was analyzing why he thought that peanuts stuck stuck with him so well. Mm -hmm. Um and he, he had kind of boiled it down to, he thought like one of the big powerful things about the character is like, you always know Charlie Brown. You always know him because of his shirt. Like, you know yeah. him because of his specific hair. And each character has like a distinct quality to it where you're like, ah, that's Linus. Oh, that's, you know, um, yeah. Charlie Brown. We lost Gary Hodges. Yeah. I think Jim, uh, Jim, your guys got there. 
Uh, oh, you can get them back for a nominal fee. Yeah, nice. five hundred dollars nice. super chat. I need I need some super chats. Get get <laughs> Gary back. But um, but no. Uh, so I guess my my gist was that I think that's a real strength of of your work, Paul. Is like each character is so like rec- It's very much like Jim's too, where y- you create these really recognizable characters where you can read a lot about their personality just through like their shape. And yeah. I also like that none of the templates are like the same shape. Like each character <laughs> kind of has their own unique head, like their own. Yeah. Uh, so Thanks. I wanted to Thanks. get into like how you approach like character design for these. Um, oh. Is that done kind of like scripting where you do that initially or do you, uh, you do know, that during? I feel pretty comfortable. Uh, you know, I, can, I imagine characters from, you know, actors or friends, you know, pe- real life people. And I'm pretty comfortable with drawing people. So I don't have to do like like character sheets or anything like that. What's that going on in that page? But yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to draw character sheets or anything like that, you know. Um, it's I find like... Um, like uniforms, like, or, you know, uh, attire, like getting the attire, like, you know, uh, I don't know if you have some sort of special, you know, patch over here and like drawing police officers, unfortunately, like drawing police officers sucks, you know, because they got all the badges. And yeah. All of that. No, that I, have, I have the cool. same thing with drawn soldiers in mine. That's yeah, like, right. Yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff is just annoying, you know, because you got to go. You back. guys, they've been doing a village people, uh, um, co- the construction comic worker, yeah. the Indian chief. It's terrible. Like, it's yeah, terrible. that headdress. If I have to draw that one that more time, swirls <laughs> around. It's a yeah. lot. Young man, pick yourself off the ground. <laughs> that's the that's the title of the book. It's, it's young man, pick yourself off off the ground. <laughs> Um, no, I have, like, I have a question, Josh, real quick. Paul, yeah. is is your publishing uh, company or your your name for your publishing? Is it Paul Pay Press? <laughs> no, just and if Paul. not, why? <laughs> just find it. At, you can go to Amazon, Paul Pay, and Detective Press. And are these print? Are these print on demand? Print on demand, yes, sir. They're yeah. fantastic. The quality yeah. is really good too. Yeah, yeah. it's real nice. Yeah. yeah, pretty happy with it. You know. One I think of the, the format, that... sorry, the format you chose too works incredibly with the print on demand because I've gotten print on demand books that don't look as amazing as this. This looks like, hey, yeah, hey, hey I'm right, I'm right awesome. here, man. I can hear yeah. you. <laughs> so I've gotten those, Jim. I've gotten those from people, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't. So I, wanted, him. I, I did want to share with you guys, like, um, you know, I had been working on different things. I had just done uh, samurai tie animation that took me about a year, I'll say to do and uh, that five minute <laughs> film. Uh, so I was, and I hadn't done, I hadn't done a graphic novel in quite some time. And so I kind of wanted to get back into comics. And so I just like went on like this binge, like reading. I was done with, I was done with my um, film and I wasn't sure if I, what I was going to do next. You know, I think that was the last time I was on our, the Artcasters. And uh, so I just kind of like, you know, I had been seeing a bunch of artists on Artcasters and in the community, like uh, like Adam Laurie. So I got his comic, you know, this one. And I read, you know, looked at it and read it. And it's just sort of enjoyed the art. But then, you know, two stories and... Uh, and um, uh, your other book, the uh, J- Jacob's Apartment, you know, just checking out the the storytelling in that. Uh, I got dinosaurs versus Mars bots right here, DVSM around here somewhere. But just stuff, all kinds of stuff. I just was reading. Oh, here's a great one. I want to show. Um, Jim turned me on to this one. These are wild. This guy. Oh, that's oh, awesome. yeah. I don't know if you guys have. I don't know if I know that one. What's uh, the, the author is named um, something Peterson Hogard? I think he's from like Norway or something. But he writes about this hard boy. Or is he Dutch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he writes about this hard boiled Chicago detective named Bill Nash. And yeah, uh, yeah the artwork is just crazy. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. 
But it's, you know, I think they're going to be available in, in America soon, like in the next year or so like that. Oh, really? That's what um, I hear. Yeah, but just, you know, diving in. Another one, another great one that um, I don't know if you guys have seen Doug Tenaple. You're very familiar with Doug Tenaple. His books are oh, wow. really no. inspiring to me. But I just like just. You know, dove into all, but I, you know, I love, I love like um, the community and like I've got Scott's books and I f f uh, backed uh, Path of the Pale Writer and, you know, the, uh, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, where's, where's my DVSM book? I would, I would really love it if you pulled out an issue of Wii Magazine. Yeah, or he, he ends up with some BDSM and he's like, oops. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wrong one. Yeah, this is, oh. this is great. Yeah. Oh, he did, actually. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 It's great, great, great artwork in here. Oh, hey. Where, where can people get that those books, by the way? Just the, as they're being shown, Gary, where can people... Uh... Uh, right now, they're all sold out, but I'm getting oh. ready to do a new print order. Uh, as I've, like, as I mentioned at the outset, nearly finished the versus M 1979, the third one. So I'll be doing a print order probably in the next few weeks, and I'll try and restock 75 and 97 at the same time. That so did you like? Cool news. Did you run this through a copy machine or something? I mean, no, it's all Photoshop shenanigans yeah really? and what's funny is i was i, was, I, just, I just don't love this man this is cool shit. i love i i love doing those and i yeah. feel like i broke jim's heart once when i told him that those new news articles are fake the nude articles he the thought news? i really i think he thought i really found like an old newspaper clipping that sort of might maybe fit and then i i don't know but no i i go to old newspapers i find a page where I think I could squeeze in my own article and then I write a fake one and put it in there and then Photoshop it up. So it looks like part of it. That's but, awesome. Yeah. yeah. My, uh, so the new detective press, detective press autotropolis, it opens with a news article mm -hmm. about the murder and this is the mystery. So you, you already know what happened, how kind of how it ends. Right. But the, you know, the mystery is who did the murder? All I did was I took the, you know, the murder, the murder um, of those four college students in Moscow, Idaho, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, that crazy dude that Coburg, yeah. Ryan Koberger, he drove across the country. You guys don't know about this one? The guy I, who killed, he murdered. I'm sure I did, but, you know. Murdered four college students. Anyway, I took the news art. I just took a news article from that. And I just changed out the names and, you know, yeah. details and because I wanted it to be authentic, you know. Right. And then I put it through chat GPT and it came out perfect. <laughs> 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 <I don't know. laughs> but uh, yeah, I, that's that's fun stuff. You know, just take it from one of the very first uh, books, uh, real, you know, novels that I read just out of just for fun was The Born Identity. Yeah. And uh -huh. uh, that starts off with a news article from like the late seventies or something about, about the, the Jackal, Carlos, the Jackal. Mm -hmm. It was like an actual, it's an actual news article. And then the whole fiction goes from there. I just thought that was cool shit. And I like wanted to do it in mind, you know? So yeah. The, uh, welcome to Rust city news article from in the beginning of that one is actually, is a real news article. It's about vampires in uh, in uh, Africa, I think. Oh, another great thing was when I was a kid, I was terrified of vampires, like the the vampire movies where you think you got away, right? And yeah. To you know, like the the guy and his girlfriend are driving away, and they're in the pickup, driving out of the woods at night, and they're like, "Oh, we made it out alive!" And then his girlfriend turns to him, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Ah, oh, that's terrifying." I love that. So I wanted to do that, you know, put some vampires in there. So yeah. Yeah. I was curious about the vampires. But what's what's neat about the world you've kind of built with Rust City is like, and also the way you craft it, it's like there's still plausibility to it. Um, and it still feels almost like, yeah, like a like if Raymond Chandler, which was funny because I almost caught myself saying Philip Chandler, <laughs> but it's yeah. it's like if Raymond Chandler like wrote like a um a, a 
story about um about vampires it's kind of yeah kinda fun well I, I think that's what uh gary hodges does is he you know he's got dinosaurs and mm-hmm. mars bots but but yet it's uh you know it's kind of like an x-files story you know you so you, you've got this sort of ridiculous scenario but you make it you know be you I, I don't know what you make it believable or somehow you know, grounded Right. Yeah. It's yeah. the part where Gary goes, Your scenario is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and then just logs off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> logs off. yeah I'm so rude. Yeah, yeah. Another fun thing about uh here's another little tear going in. <laughs> I tell me I feel like like Jim Luhan would would uh know about this, but what, another thing that I like to try to do is you get the you get the story going, you know, it's a hard boiled detective story. And then, but by halfway through it, like, I, I want the reader to be in reading something so stupid and so ridiculous and just completely nonsensical that they don't, but they don't really notice how they've gotten there. You know, that's yeah. kind of the goal of mine. Like, you know, just, just this ridiculous thing. I want the reader to, you know, maybe at some point just stop and go, What? You know, wait a minute. <laughs> this is dumb. I can do you know? that with my co-hosting skills too. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I, I think right now I have the co-hostists with the mostest. So I don't know. I don't know. I think Scott and Corey might have to stay in that basement for a while. Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't seen any super chats roll in. So no, it's true. Sorry, guys. Just hey. you, know. <laughs> you know, they didn't need all their fingers. Christopher uh, was saying uh, Corey, uh, Gary's books aren't true. Um, <laughs> I can't confirm or deny. It's all highly classified. Yeah. I did. Th- I feel like we did maybe miss some questions. I felt yeah. like I said and some like, again, by. Edie had a really good question of, uh, earlier. Okay, I know she was asking. I think uh, he oh, was yeah. asking about uh, whether you you kind of touched on this, but whether you um, plot out like. The bullet points of the story before you get yeah, you outline or yeah or... yeah i do that when i'm struggling with how the story goes and i'm trying to keep track of stuff and i think of ideas and i don't write them down and then i forget you know and i'm like yeah. oh man i'm in the shower and I, you know there's a point where like i'm just thinking about it all the time you know yeah. i can't stop you know yeah. I'm like, this is annoying i wish i could just write this out and be done with it you know but it takes some time Another all thing is, you get all kind day of. I dream about stories. What's that? All day I dream about stories. Do you? <laughs> you never heard that song? Oh, is that a song? I thought you were actually admitting that well, all yeah, day it's yeah. sex, not stories. Oh. All day I dream about sex. Mm-hmm. It spells Adidas. I don't know. Yeah. Go Google yep. that. Dude. It's true. And and the band that did it wears like their own custom Adidas that are a little strange. Just well, go back. Tell us more about your shower. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I I do uh, like that idea though that like when you're in that crafting stage, like that early part of creativity is both terrifying and also super exhilarating because it's like that mm-hmm. endless point. But it would be nice if we could all just be like a Jack Kerouac who just you like get the scroll of paper and you just put yeah. it in the typewriter and do Sorry. a bender for a night and you're done. Yeah. Like that yeah, novel yeah. completed. Yeah. And how does your crafting stage match to Dee Dee's crafting stage? <laughs> That's Similar. true. I feel like Dee Dee wins the craft war. I think. Yeah. I think yeah. by, by far. Yeah. Would that be the Worlds of War craft? <laughs> <laughs> Jim's on yeah. point. On point. <laughs> like all my conversations go with Jim. I just, I just, just uh, and, laughing, and Gary died, and that's the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I just, I don't even have a reaction to that. I can't. <laughs> we have to placate though, because Gary, we're in the basement too, so like we, we gotta make sure we, we, uh, we're let out at some point. Yeah, Jim. Who's a brilliant animator? I just thought I would mention, and an yeah. even more, out of the basement, and an even more brilliant kidnapper. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. I have to say that would be hilarious. A critique of a kidnapping where you're like, you know, I have to say the way you went. I wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of a strange choice. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, well, um, it's the lotion in the basket. <laughs> that joke has to be dropped almost every stream. Um, <laughs> if you guys don't know that joke, uh, watch Silence of the Lambs, and then when you hear it, you'll cringe every time. Every time. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, let's. I'm trying to catch up with. Yeah, I'm, I'm scrolling so too. much. Um. Okay. So Eddie was, I think this is in regards to your different character designs where we were talking about each character being really identifiable by like different templates. Mm -hmm. Is Real quick, is that a conscious decision to kind of do that? Like make sure they all have differing shapes yeah, or I mean, is that just know, keeping yeah, yourself I, interested? Yeah, yeah, because, because there's not color and, um, you know, I want people to know who's talking and, you know, I'm always worried about, I do struggle. Uh, I'm not comfortable. One of the things I'm not comfortable with is, is my story making sense. Is it, I'm afraid I'm going to just write something that people just really don't get, you know, and they're like, Oh, this is just like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I like it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> something like that. I, that's, that's what I don't. So part of that is, you know, having distinct voices and distinct characters. And, right. And yeah. Also like, I like, I like diverse. I like diversity, and you know, I, I think it's a good thing. And uh, I, I like that's another thing that I like. You know, it's just like this big jumble kind of mess of people and things, and that's what I'm trying to create. That's what I'm trying to create. The atmosphere that I'm trying to create. So. Yeah, and it feels really authentic to the city, like to the Rust City. You know, that you're creating. Um, that's one of the remarkable things about it is like each character has just a real subtlety and i don't know i i really Thanks. enjoyed those books yeah. uh, eddie says uh what if people send pictures of themselves to be put in your book paul pictures <laughs> like, like near new and, and money <laughs> and money that's true uh, so pictures yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, you know, uh, the Rust City Stabber is based on it. So what happened in Flint, um, I think it was around 2010 or something. Uh, there was this guy who just, like, went around the city stabbing black guys, killing them. It was crazy. And so I'm like, okay, that'll be my, you know, it'll be sort of the main crime spree going on. But I changed it to a, a, a Middle Eastern guy stabbing Mexicans. So I had my friend Juan Cruz be the first Mexican that was stabbed to death, you know. <laughs> like check this out. Actually, he was like, actually, oh, this is great. He was actually number one. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, did you say number one? Did you just number say that? One. <laughs> uh, yeah. so do you do you this is funny because I you know I, I like to try and recruit people to be references in my yeah, book. Yeah. Can you tell like did you tell him like so you're gonna be stabbed to death? Like, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah right. You know, yeah, yeah, he's like, make sure it's you know it's gross and everything. Yeah, people are usually they're excited about yeah meeting yeah. terrible ends. It seems like. But. Yeah, I mean, Christopher Runciman put Jim and I in a, one of his one page comics. I I was surprised by how much I enjoyed that. That was that was awesome. Yeah, that was so yeah. much fun watching him draw it and everything and. Cause I, you know, I, I do caricatures sometimes and I draw, I like to draw people and, and I always wonder like, you know, sometimes it starts taking a long time and I feel like they're getting bored and I'm worried, you know, and I'm like, why do people sit here and do this? Or why do they ask me to draw the picture? You know? Yeah. So I, then when I did it or, you know, Chris did it for, for me, I just, enjoyed, I enjoyed the hell out of that. That was cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. So, yeah. Yeah, awesome. I feel like um, whenever Jim does, you know, all of his characters based on my likeness, um, I get really <laughs> flattered. Um, you know, it's it's just it's it's pretty nice. But... If you take Josh's head and turn it upside down, it's still a face. Mm -hmm. That's true. And actually, like if I shaved my head, I actually have a face on the back of my head as well. <laughs> so my head can just rotate. And which yeah. is why he sleeps on his side. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> He's like, like I said, basement super chats. Come on. Wow. Guys. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, I, oh I think that, um, like, 
it, it seems like a daunting task to write a mystery though, because to me, the thing that intimidates me about the idea of writing mysteries and that I think you were really successful with, with the Perez books is the fact that like, there's other stories where you can have a slow build and maybe the suspense doesn't keep you page turning, but like the genre you're kind of inspired by is re reliant on like action page turns yeah. and kind of also a, a broader thread that's just total suspense and well, what, yeah one of the things that i'll do like if you don't do, if you don't mind can you bring those one of those pictures up again 100 percent. bring that beat back <laughs> uh not so i think it's go back a couple okay hang on josh can we that, get a close up of you josh this one you mind? No, the, the other one, the other one where he's, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, that one right there. Yeah. I keep hitting the wrong button on here. So there's, you know, there's so many, <laughs> yeah, not that. <laughs> <laughs> this one? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's okay. one. Yes. My apologies. But there's so many different ways of doing things, and I don't really know the science behind it, you know. Um, uh, I, I love watching your stream, Joshua Kemble, because you, uh, <laughs> You, you talk about this quite a bit, you know, about like uh, the, where the readers, are. You know, I don't just the way that the person is reading it. I try to imagine the person is reading it. And so like this one, like there's not much going on dialogue wise, especially at the bottom of the page, you know, it's just some action, like the car is going around. And then it, I just have this one word in this big space. And that sort of, I've, I want it to be like an impactful moment, you know, and the, so that's part of like pacing is, and so I just imagine the reader being kind of like stopping and maybe looking at that page a minute or maybe starting to turn the page, but then kind of trying to look at that page, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that that's part of, part of the trick about the pacing mm -hmm. and other pages where I have, you know, a car chase going on. I want that to be, to be, you know, moving along. Yeah. Like that. So here, there's a lot going on, but there's a lot going on in each frame. It's the same amount going on in each frame. So I feel like this one, the pace would be, you could sit here and look at it just as long, but the pace is faster and that because it's a car chase and everything. And, and, you know, you're going frame through frame the same speed. And so it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know the science behind it or anything. I'm not a you know master of it, but that's the shit that I kind of. How much re how much reference were you using for that? This is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm tracing. <laughs> and, and is any of it copied and pasted, or is it just? No, no, I, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Hey, I, just, no. I let uh, uh, OpenAI draw it. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. There's the Paul Pate uh, GPT. Who draws anymore? What kind of? <laughs> yeah. game are you Drawing, drawing is for chumps. Writing too. I'm trying for suckers. Look, guys, suckers I'm making creative. your own art. Yeah, no, I'm creative. I know how to type in prompts. <laughs> right. Creative prompts. You know, um, yeah, that's uh, that. This, uh, I do want to kind of mention the hand drawing. Did you say creative prompts? Is that what you said? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of uh, a way that someone would justify. Uh, that's right. <laughs> anyhow. Um, I'm a prompt craftsman. These are yeah, handcrafted. Yeah, new job, yeah. Prompt craftsman. <laughs> it's we're I guess, losing the AI aficionados right now. We gotta <laughs> we gotta get back on track. I love it. Um, I I think like oh let's actually sorry let me pull back that page. Um, so ah. Not this one. This one. I need Corey back. <laughs> he actually is better at navigating. Um, Corey is dying. When he watches this, he's going to be just like chewing on I his know. lip. He's going to be like, I have one of his shirts on. They mentioned way. AI, I, which is. I wanted to tell you guys, this is a really nice shirt. Ooh. Like I love oh, the yeah. art, course, but it's also like the quality of it is is really great. Yeah, it's one of Corey's uh, shirt. Hell yeah! Oh, cool. Good. Day. I should have brought my Corey Kerr mug. I, I did. <laughs> Really? Earlier tonight, on uh, earlier tonight, Jamar Nicholas was drinking coffee out of one of your mugs, Jim. Hell yeah! Out of one of my mugs. Yeah, yeah. So he called you out. Said, Keep my mugs out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love Jamar. He's a great guy. 
Yeah, that's badass. Um, also, my Jim Luhan mug got broken, so I need to replace it. Oh, excellent! It. Really? Wow. It, it was dropped, or it was it was dropped. yeah, it was just Compaction. like screw it. No, it was uh, when you say drop, you mean thrown. When you yeah. said thrown, you mean thrown yeah. away. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm done with Jim Luhan's mugs. No, I'm just kidding. I, I need to get a new one. So I've been tr debating because I had oh, the Swizzle Stick Army one, but now I'm like, hmm, do I want to replace that or do I want another or do I want both? Who knows? Um, the thing I was going to mention, Paul, though, is is there's a really fluid style to the line work that you do where it's a lot of very organic lines and not often like perfectly ruled outlines. And I think that creates a lot of movement mm -hmm. in the stories. I actually like love the freehand kind of nature of these. Um, but it's very precise. And it's like, again, like I think that's why Gary and I are so impressed by like the two hour thing, because it's like most people, if they do a two hour page, it will look rushed and oh, it'll yeah. have, I guess, an expedient line, but it's not going to look finished. It doesn't have that polish. Yeah. Whereas your pages look perfect. Like they look finished, you know? They look finished. They, yeah. yeah. Again, I would never have guessed that fast. So, but I, mean, they, I think this page right here that we're does have at, that movement, you know? Yeah. This page right here is, that's a lot. I mean, there's a lot going on that on this page. This took longer than two hours. But like the other page, it wasn't so much. That probably took less. Yeah. This one, yeah, maybe two hours. I don't know. Probably. Paul, would you say the people that take longer than that to do pages? aren't trying as hard right yeah <laughs> They're obviously just yeah the dilly dally really inferior yeah, yeah. you know but i, I don't want to you know would you say that those people should just quit what they're doing all together? <laughs> just, uh, just give up. Just, yeah. 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 So definitely don't like have a podcast. You know, or yeah, exactly. Or a show or anything. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that would be, yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but every time I watch Christopher Runciman draw, I'm oh yeah, fucking pissed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he is, he is yeah. crazy talented. Um, yeah, shout out to Christopher Runciman for sure. <laughs> Even for a Canadian, he's just like yeah, uh, right. Yeah. yeah, it's like you're Canadian. Yeah. How do you do this? Well, that's because that's because the country backs him in his arts. I know it must be. <laughs> Yeah, right. that's true. It's it's literally it's got to be it's got to be that or just the climate. It's it's it has nothing to do with his skill and hard work. Right. That's no, all I have. No, no. There's yeah. definitely no way in that. Obviously, it's unfair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, man. Like, Philip's a pretty killer uh, cartoonist as well, and it's like I I don't know. Like it's there's something in Canada, something in the water something. that's making oh, a cartoonist you see that? have uh, an unfair did. advantage. It, Phil did a cover for, uh, and it looked like kind of like the style of Fred Flintstone. He's oh yeah, the gold. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Detective Gary or something. Detective right? Gary, that's right. Yeah, I want to see that. He was, he was like, maybe I'll, you know, Phil's funny. He's like, uh, you know, maybe I'll make a book. Like, dude, make the make the book, man. Come on, yeah. I think it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, and like, I mean, heck, you know, if he makes the book, we'll we'll show it to Gold Key. You know, like we. What is what is this Gold Key? I miss that. Okay, so, uh, I will Ron, say this. Ron Golke, he's a friend of ours. <laughs> yeah, but oh, if, is that that porn guy? <laughs> if uh, <laughs> if you guys do check out Gold Key, like who was on our last art casters, I just wanted yeah. to give them a shout out that their um, Kickstarter is like killing it. Like it's going like, really day well. Two, yeah, I think they're close to like twenty grand at this point, and it's yeah. like day two of their Kickstarter. So uh, make sure you guys support that Gold Key comic too while while you're at it, because that company is exciting. Um, the start, Ooh. I think. Yeah. Do, do, can you give me the rundown real quick? I, I, I missed last week's episode. Is, what is Gold Key? Is it so, so Gold Key was like a publisher that existed for like years and years and years, like in the 60s and 70s. And they used to publish a lot of properties. They were the primary publisher of like Star Trek comics. And they do, okay. do they do Tarzan or something like that? Or, uh, I think or Turok. Turok. Yeah. Turok. But they did a lot of like properties too. I think a lot of Hanna-Barbera. Um, I, I know they did a lot of Disney comics as well like a lot mm -hmm. of early um and a lot of pulpy know. stuff like i have some old ufo comics that Gold yes. Keeper, yeah yeah and i i like adore those covers i've looked at those covers for years like for just inspiration when i was doing like pulpy type stuff because it's just like there's uh -huh. so many hand-painted beautiful covers but they were a big publisher and then they kind of went out of business 
Okay. And these four guys, one of one of whom is friends with Scott Sirkland, um, managed to acquire the uh, like trading a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle number one for mm-hmm. the license to have Gold Key and relaunched it. Um, and they've put a lot of thought and effort and money into like build, rebuilding it, and uh, they they just launched their first book. So awesome. it's pretty. Pretty exciting, but they're they're planning on tying into actual properties that exist that Gold Key right. used to work with, and then from there, also building out to like more personal stories and stuff like that. But it's cool. Um, okay. Yeah, they're they're really nice. good. Nice, great. But, but yeah, um, I also so, got Frank's book here. Hell yeah, Frank's book. Did I, did I, the legendary Jim Lahan. Oh, let's let's make that a big screen. <laughs> Boom. Make your store logic. Hell yeah. That's a must read for any comic book aficionado. I agree. Another I agree. thing is I, I really get intimidated by uh like watching like for example, well, Josh, your your you know, art knowledge and you know, Gary, how much you uh you know much you know and develop your characters you know and and then like even just like watching like your uh you and jim do your top five movies like all your movie knowledge and uh and i'm like well i liked uh superman you know, <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> and uh, you guys are like i liked you know this one from 1968, this black and white film from, you know, I would, you know, but yeah. I caught this one on PBS late one night. It was yeah. 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 Like, film well, week. Yeah. I, yeah, he's like, I could understand the confusion because you like movies and I like films. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I only watch films on my 35 millimeter prints. In my home. Which, by the way, now that I'm done drawing a book, I'll be pushing uh, Mr. Luhan hard to get back into top five. I have yeah. to say, top five is solely responsible for me getting back into Risk. So you guys... I wondered. I, I asked Jim this. I was like, do you think this is my fault? We're yeah. enablers. <laughs> do you We're think totally I'm responsible? It was literally... I, I listened to that episode. I thought very fondly of all the board games, which I mostly agreed with everyone's top board games, although there were quite a few um, interesting ones from... Uh, well, from, Chris, um, Chris yeah, yeah, Ward yeah. had some board games I don't think anybody's ever heard of yeah. except for Chris Ward. I think yeah. the people who made those games have not heard of those games. Oh, but we are, we are all, <laughs> so it's a, it, we're all in agreement that it, the risk thing is somebody's fault. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I only <laughs> wish that it could, Josh yeah. could have gotten into uh, playing Yipes. That would have been better. <laughs> but it was hilarious because, like, when you guys were mentioning it, that's when I was like, Huh, I wonder if there's an app. Maybe I'll play a game real quick. And then I was like, yeah, I was forgot how much yeah. I love this game. Well, I'm I'm glad the topic well. was in our top five favorite murders. Because yeah. <laughs> top, yeah five, top, 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 top five favorite pornos or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Would have been a whole new direction. Mm-hmm. That's new true. Direction. That would be like suddenly my YouTube takes a totally different tack and it's not on YouTube. So, yeah. Josh, do you have the new direction image to share with the the has that been, has that made an appearance? New, I, feel like we, I feel like we did share it on a stream. Um but I don't know see. if we did. I don't know if we, we did. If and I, I think especially it. you should share the track list. <laughs> I, think that was important. <laughs> I don't have the track list though, but I do have the, I have the track list. Wait okay. a minute. I can share wow. this on my screen here. Why? Uh, there we go. Oh, hey. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. This was amazing. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can size it. I am such a boomer here. See if you could size that new direction for us. Yeah, I'm trying to can size get, it. Can we get that new direction big. bigger, please? That new direction was way too big, so I needed to make it smaller. I needed a smaller new direction. What if I say you're my favorite boy? Will it get bigger? <laughs> It's growing. <laughs> oh, now it's shrinking. I got. I was in the pool. <laughs> wow. Anyhow, you guys, this is a big album, like a big <laughs> new direction yeah. album. Yeah. You know, I would say wow. it's. I don't know. How would you guys describe a uh, new direction? You know. Well, yeah. I've got the track list. If you see, can yeah. you see in the? 
And by the way, Gary, did you you actually put this together? <laughs> I, I I did handle the 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 band imagery. It is amazing. Uh, he did handle the new direction. <laughs> I did handle it. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you can. So anyway, was it, can was, this... it, was it hard to handle or? <laughs> It was hard to handle. You no, know, at first it seemed like a lot. I was a little intimidated, uh, but <laughs> I figured, you know what? <laughs> I'm as totally mad as anybody else. I can handle this. I can. I can. Like, I, I there's no reason to be afraid. Okay, let's get this. Maybe it'll be fun. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> okay, guys, this is the track list. Do you want to read them out, Gary? No, you please, please. Actually, okay. Jim, since Jim came up with the track list, well, I, yeah, think I, I feel like Jim should read this in a in a very like Jim Lujan so, voice. So, so the album for New Direction was gonna wasn't it? What was the title? You didn't put the title. I don't. I don't remember. I I don't. You. <laughs> oh, it was called Stroke of Luck. <laughs> <laughs> right. New Direction's album was called Stroke of Luck. Right. Of course, uh, we have Close to the Bone. Yeah, it's, that was a really one. A lot of people on the dance floor like that. Yeah, uh, wet on wet, the art song. That's <laughs> about that's oil like, painting. Oil. Yeah, painting. that's true. Experimental. Yeah. Harder than you think. I believe Paula Abdul might have covered that at some point. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, can't hide my love. No, there's, you know. there's no missing it. Yeah. No. Blow me away, which a lot of people don't know. Burt Bacharach co-wrote that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, fill that hole in my heart. Yes, that was a good one. I remember that was on a lot of commercials. Uh, uh, right. Hard on me, hard on you. That was good. That was in their uh -huh. like Prince era. I think they were trying to go for. It. Yes. Um, oh, I'm a big fan of this one. From behind, it's a great uh, love. Yeah. Snuck up. Love snuck behind. up. Uh -huh. That's, yeah. That was a great one. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, everyone loves the existential <laughs> dilemma of man versus God. Yeah. No, I think that, that was, was the, the... that was New Direction trying a New Direction. Ironically, I love that. Yeah, they, they did, and they got they got one uh, in the direction of God. By the way, um, right now in the in the basement, I'm forcing Scott and Corey to listen to this on loop. <laughs> it's just it's just full volume down. with a strobe light. I love it. Um, and then uh, Philip said, "Wow, that's not even subtle." <laughs> I, I don't understand what he means. Yeah, what I don't know. I don't, what what could what could possibly be wrong? We're, We're just, just talking, talking about, about music. Band. It's yeah. just music. <laughs> well i love that uh as a uh segue that was fun um cool i i feel like we've kind of touched on the topic um is there anything you feel like now that you're on your third because i don't think i've ever written three in a series right i've written like book one of a what will be a two series but i haven't finished book two yet when what? i'm in doubt i turn to the book yeah book one book two yeah that's true the word um, of paul yes it'll and be paul like says, paul, paul 118 119 well so actually and it josh, came to pass okay sorry i'm not sure where you're going with that josh but you you're making me curious so as i mentioned before you had this big gap between yes. the second one and this one Avoiding new direction puns. How does it feel? Like how? Like does it? Is this? Is this easier? Is it harder? Is it? It's a bit of a stretch. I'm really trying to be serious here. Uh, no, I mean like that's too good at the fit. What's um, <laughs> was it? Yeah, are you having trouble fitting it in? Well, if you could just peel back the layers and tell us about your story crafting technique. Oh my god. It's not even subtle, man. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, but seriously, how tell me yeah. the, the difference in experience between doing the first book and now you're doing a third. Yeah, so no, I mean, uh, yeah, I've, I've, my art I think is uh, a lot better. Obviously, I've done so much art between book 2 and book 3 with all the animation and other comics. Um but yeah, I'm just a lot more comfortable. I'm enjoying it a lot more. I, I feel like I hope the story is written a little better. Um, you know, and I'm just older and um, so I feel a lot more confident. I think a big, huge part of this whole artistic endeavor is confidence. Confidence. Feeling, you know, experience and feeling comfortable and what you can do and having a vision of where you're going. And so it's, yeah. a, it's yeah. a little bit of a 
cliche question, but it's something I've been thinking about having finished my third. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you could give advice to your younger self, the one doing the first one, mm -hmm. like, what do you think it would be? What, what do you think you were better at now that you could have been doing then, but you just didn't realize? Yeah, I think it's just the confidence of, you know, feel just trust more. it more. Yeah, trust it and, and ha enjoy it, have fun. Um, the whole the whole idea of, of the big the the main uh, idea for this whole thing is to have fun. I want it to be a fun experience creating, and I want it to be a fun experience for the reader. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not looking for anything too um, deep or anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. strictly like you know, like I said, you know. I hate this guy, and then oh, he kills him at the end. You know, yes, yeah, that was some good shit. You know, <laughs> and yeah. that's pretty much it. You know, so um, yeah, but yeah, I think it would be the confidence thing. Just believe in yourself. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's to anybody watching. I mean, a big part of why I do this too is is, um, you know, I, 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 I think if you like, if you can, if you think of something to do. I think you should do it, you know, yeah. in, in any, yeah. in any aspect of life. It's like, you can't let just, you know, cause I, you know, a lot of people talk a lot. Like, oh, I'd be cool if I got a dirt bike, you know, and like <laughs> you got to get a dirt bike, man, go and do it. You know, don't just right. talk about it. And so that's what I want to do is, you know, have this idea for these books and I want to do it so that other people can look at it and say, I can do that. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and this was great about this art casters community is, is there's so much um, great talent and that inspires me that you guys all do. And, uh, and so I hope to do a little bit of that for others too. That's a big part of why I do this. So I um, agree. I agree. Hey guys, shh, listen, hear that. <laughs> it's Corey and Scott sleeping. <laughs> They're snoring. That's cute. Okay. <laughs> that's not at all creepy i wanted to ask you guys like I, uh why so you know another thing is i just feel like a storyteller uh, i haven't always been that way i don't think but at some point i figured out that i'm a storyteller and mm -hmm. why are we all and we all are yeah. why are we like that you know what is it mm -hmm. <laughs> Untreated <laughs> mental illness, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, you know, honestly, because we have, I have, I have a, I, it's around here. It fell off. It, I have a, a post-it note somewhere in my mess of a desk here. I remembered. A, I was listening to an interview with Bruce Springsteen, and he was talking about how. Actually, I think Barack Obama was interviewing Bruce Springsteen. It was on there. They did a podcast. If you go to Spotify, you'll find it. They did a, like a multi. Okay. I know, pretty random. And uh, Obama was saying that he was surprised when he met Springsteen, that he seemed a little shy and a little, you know, a little more reserved than he imagined from having seen him, you know, perform and stuff. And Springsteen said, and I, I related to this a little bit. He said, um, hey, little girl, is your daddy home? He did. <laughs> which is really out of nowhere and kind of weird but no he said uh he in his experience a lot of creatives are more introverted more shy more on that side of the spectrum mm -hmm. and and he said it, the way he made sense of it was i think uh the people who have had the most trouble communicating and expressing are the people that are driven in these other directions to do it in a, in a, in another way. Like I'm, I'm sort of paraphrasing what he said, but basically that there's this need to kind of communicate and because you're not great at it in right. just normal life, like this is the way, this is the way you do it. Yeah. I think at least in my case, there's something to that. Yeah. I see yeah. That. yeah. Definitely. Same here for sure. Because I just go around mostly confusing people during the day. <laughs> right, exactly. Walk yeah. away from me and they're like, what the fuck? Did he what, just who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I relate to that a lot too because I feel like um, it's it, um, there are stories that I would like to tell and I think that I was driven to 
as a kid, when I was socially awkward and stuff like that, I would tell stories like that was first off, like art was a gateway to communicate mm -hmm. and it was also a gateway to earn social credit. Um, yeah. But it was also the best way I could communicate the clearest way. Cause I, it, it's like the one area where I don't have to be too wordy. I don't have to be like, you can just kind of craft a, 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 a story as you're intending. And I feel like that's the strength of like visual communication too. Um, I think some people have to tell the story, the yeah. story, and other people have to tell a story. <laughs> I think I'm the latter. I think I have to tell a story. There's not like one story that I like, this is it, man. Or, yeah. Or it's not even really the story that jumps out and says, oh, you have to be told. But I have to always be telling a story. Yeah. Constantly. Like, yeah. You yeah. I, something. I feel yeah. like that, too. I don't have I don't have a whole lot of stories in me, though. Like, you know, like I really struggle to come up with. I got a bunch of like anecdotes. I, I'm more of like an anecdote. Like this, this shit happened. Like a guy stole a U-Haul, you know. <laughs> That's what a great happened? anecdote. <laughs> what happened at the end? Well, I don't know. He stole you. I don't know. Yeah. Ran, you know what? I don't have a beginning, middle, and end. That's where I struggle. <laughs> um, yeah. Those are sometimes those are the most fun stories that just kind of lead you and they take you a certain yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. To tell them. They kind of. Yeah. But there is one other thing. I, I, Scott Sirkland was making me think about this with his video. I, I had left a comment for him letting him know that I don't know if I would be where I am with D versus M if not for him. Oh, really? That, that, yeah, I don't I don't know. Because I think when I, D versus M, when I met him was mostly like a coloring book and prints. Like I hadn't done any comics yet. Mm -hmm. And I had seen him at all the Phoenix cons. And uh, I don't know if I'd watched him much on YouTube, but I always saw his booth was always very conspicuous because it was this whole mad scientist thing and he had the lab coat and, you know, like you would remember like, oh, yeah, it's that guy again. And I uh, I don't remember how we finally talked. I don't know if he came over to my t like artist alley table or I went over and just chatted him up. And he was so uh, warm and encouraging and um made it very he, he, in a very positive way kind of demystified the whole thing like hmm. i think i saw him as like oh this is like he's a like this guy and i'm this weirdo doing prints in artist alley you know and and the way like when, after i talked to him i it, i felt a little empowered i felt like oh i could do this mm -hmm. like i could i could participate in this and I, I, I thought of that when I saw his video saying that he was going to step back from the, the, you know, that aspect of YouTube. And I realized that a fair amount of my motivation as a creator is admiring art, admiring your guys' books and animation, admiring like the things you do, admiring stuff other people do, music that gets made, paintings that get painted, all of that, and just wanting to participate in that. Like yeah. it seemed like it, and it, it reminds me, I remember, I think Jerry Seinfeld said when he was starting out, he didn't know if he'd be good or bad. He knew he just wanted to hang out with comedians. Like he just wanted to be a part of like oh, yeah. he loved this and wanted to be a part of it. And I think that's also a, I would say a solid half of my motivation is like, I just enjoy art and I enjoy in my own little modest way contributing. To it. Yeah. Yeah. And it does have that wonderful byproduct of like, I love that I'm at an, at an age in my life at a stage of my life where most of my friends are artists. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a very bizarre thing where it's like the younger me was like dreaming of that kind of thing where it's like, knowing a bunch of artists um, yeah. and it's fun to get to that point in your life where it's like you you start knowing artists of all kinds and like yeah and we have a common language so we it, you know generally will connect um unless right. you know you're locking people in the basement and holding them hostage and in that case right. i feel like that's not the best way to build friendships i just a better way to a connect. thought but i just build a connection though 
Right. Yeah, I mean, That's especially true. when they're threatening to go off YouTube and walk, it's like, ah, da, 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 da. you need to cool it, buddy. You need to sit and think about what you've been doing in the box. <laughs> Watch this. If you guys are all right, knock twice. See? Everything's okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. And I, also think, I also think we all get inspiration from each other. Too. Oh, and totally. Yeah, 100%. People watching like yeah. Philip and Chris and and everybody, yeah. Frank, everybody, Dee yeah. it's, oh, like, it's yeah. like it's like it is a great, nice community, and we and it kind of, you know, pushes everybody along as well. Yeah, because so. it's like it's like that feeling of like you you know if Jim drops a new animation, I'm I kind of it kind of brings me back to art school in a way sometimes where I'm like, well, I got to put something on the wall too. Yeah. Like I can't just yeah. so it's yeah. like there is this yeah. really great energy that's that's. Um, gotten for that and like even hearing gary like a couple days ago when he's like putting the period at the end of the sentence at the you know on the last page or whatever it's like that's that's a huge achievement and yeah. we've kind of been hanging around you like as you've been going through that so yeah. it's so fun to see you overcome that crazy oh, goal yeah. you know yeah um gary and, i think this is the first time you and i have uh, talked a lot sorry josh yeah uh, first time we've talked like this i think it might be like i i was trying to remember have we been on a live stream together i know i've seen you on live stream like i've watched yeah, you. no i mean i feel like i know you, you know, but i don't think yeah we right we talk that's funny you're probably right but just like you said i feel like i've seen you enough where i i it did i feel like we've talked like we're all friends or something. yeah yeah right yeah yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You're, you guys are not only fans you're friends so <laughs> There you go. That's what's really cool. About well, it. I, I think that's true of our little community. You yeah. know, like I feel like I'm a fan of all these, every, every all of us, like yeah. in all our extended circle. Yeah. And then also, mm -hmm. like I, I consider, boy, this is getting really. We'll switch to new directions jokes in a second. Yeah, but you might, I wanna, you might like want to put up Christopher. You guys are my friends, right which now. is funny because some of you have never met in person. Mm -hmm. But I just think of it was like you've, we've been through a lot. Like we had the whole disagreement. Uh, spat between you and uh, the what did you call it, the disagreement era or whatever? Oh, you don't. Want oh, to start? that's right. Yeah, yes. we don't want to. Yeah. We don't want that to. That was a difficult that. time for everybody. Right? Yeah, that was, yeah. A, was that was like a scaling up. It was kind of like the Cold yeah. War between uh, me and Barry. <laughs> And I, right. I just I worry if we even talk about it, we might start. Oh yeah, well wait, let's let's not dredge it up. You know, yeah, let's right let by God God speak. Let's have a hug. I'm not hugging that guy. He's like yeah. he's gonna crush me. Be yeah, that's if, true. Um, if Gary said no, we didn't disagree, Josh. No, we did. Not. We never disagreed. <laughs> Look, we totally disagreed, Gary. We're not starting this disagreement no. arc. No, no, it was all fine. It was all fine. <laughs> It was not fine, Gary, and I can't. It's already bad it. enough that I guess I'm officially responsible for the risk habit. I mean, like, I, I <laughs> actually, Josh, this is not just an art casters episode. This is a risk intervention for you. I, I thought so. <laughs> Your risk plane has affected me in the following ways. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, well, I I feel like we we got a, a good app in it's it's we're at about a mi an hour and 45 so it's probably a good time to let paul get some rest because right uh, unbeknownst oh, right. to our audience it hey, is like twice as late for paul as it is for, for us. me baby i gotta be at a wet t-shirt contest in florida tomorrow there you go <laughs> nice. all right are you in it or are you attending oh it? yeah totally are you judging or are you no, i'm in it yeah, that's it. I'm, look, he's, he's the judge, jury, and executioner. And, uh, <laughs> that's that's so cheap. Cheap. Do they even do those anymore? I mean, they, you can't do those. They anymore. must. They absolutely. And well, I think well. we've covered every topic now. And by the mm -hmm. way, I just I like the fact that all of us have biblical names: Joshua, James, mm -hmm. Paul, Gary. Gary, there's no I the book of Gary is probably I'm pretty favorite. sure there's not a single Gary in the book. Yeah, yes, he was. Yes, Remember when Jesus when Jesus turned the water to wine. Gary was like, Didn't you have any uh any <laughs> seltzer? I like things with bubbles. Yeah. Um Jesus, could you turn this wine into some uh buttermilk, perhaps? My stomach's a little bit. 
<laughs> why why would Gary be that way? That just doesn't seem Look, it, it, Jim can't rewrite the words of God. <laughs> I, I guess the gospel yeah. yeah. off. He takes Hold that off. very seriously. The passages wow. about Gary are as they were said. There's no <laughs> other interpretation. And in the end, Gary told the crowd, see, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are too much fun to hang out with um, in general. So uh, yeah. Um, wow. it, it is too much fun. To oh, wow. Yeah, nice. Is that your, your very own action figure? What am I looking yes. at? Oh yeah, Paul, you've shown this before, but uh, let's let's take a look at that again. It that was look... custom made for you, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's ripped like Paul too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, at first I thought it was um Ed from the Honeymooners. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know hey, Ralphie. Hey, hey Ralphie boy. <laughs> Edward Norton. Yeah. Norton. <laughs> Bend over, Norton. <laughs> <laughs> get these books. You oh, guys. Yes. Like, Thanks. get them. I want to see these charting on Amazon. So. <laughs> you don't have to read these in order, right? More taxes. No, they're all standalone, mm -hmm. but some of the characters repeat. And it's called Set in Rust City. The prices are really fair. Like, They're really cheap. Like, yeah. it, it's not going to like cost you yeah. an arm and a leg. Either. Oh, look, it it is. It's standing alone. Standing alone. Wow. 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 That's great. Wow. I love it. Um, thanks, Paul, for coming on. I wanted oh, to talk about fun. this ever since reading those books because uh, it's they're they're good books. So thank you. Um, that means a lot coming from you, man. Oh, cool. Um, oh, and uh, Christopher said good night, everybody. Good night, Christopher. Have good sweet night, Christopher. dreams. Yeah. And and watch out for Jim because he seems to be on a hostage taking um, arc right now. So I'm just saying, Christopher. <laughs> they shouldn't have been drifting around my neighborhood. <laughs> It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's close out. Um, where can everybody uh, find your stuff, Jim? Well, you know, jimluhan.com. Um, I'm working on a film right now, a feature film called The Full Fungus. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Um, and you can watch my progress every other week or so. I have a, a little show called Hey Man, How's Your Movie Going? And Christopher Runciman does the little vocal there for that. But anyways, you can see that on my YouTube channel every other week. And um, other than that, you can catch me on The Mass Singer. Um, I'm actually every costume every week until they reveal the celebrity. So I'll turn it over to my uh, celebrity friend, Gary Hodges. Uh, you can find me on Instagram uh, with this handle, uh, dinosaurs versus Mars bots, dinosaurs vs Mars bots. You can also find me on YouTube under my name, Gary Hodges. Uh, I will be doing a live stream Saturday morning, uh, 11 a.m. Arizona time, talking about the state of D versus M 1979, the third book in the D versus M series coming soon. Sorry, the way you said talking about the state of, I imagined it being like an FDR presidential address. It's going to be very much like that. Yeah. Yeah. State of like that. Davis. Right. That's M not what right. you can do for your dinosaur. No, I, I, it's me explaining the state, like being done-ish. Yeah. Like uh, the last page is drawn, but there's still lots of other things to do. So it's done-ish. Dinosaurs, Mazbots, they will not <laughs> cohabitate. Into the night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so Paul Pate, thank you for being on uh, thank you, again. I think I think this is uh, the third. I think this is the third time we've had you on, or if not the fourth, um, yeah. of Art Casters, yeah. and yeah. will not be the last. Uh, well, you're thanks. always a good guest. Um, where can people uh, pick up Detective Perez, and then also where can they check out your awesome animations, including yeah. you know you can... Samurai Tai and all that. Great. Go to paulpate.com and, and uh, there's links to everything there. Um, follow my current uh, work on the new graphic novel at Paul Pate Comics on Instagram. Paul Pate Comics on Instagram. You can find those books on uh, Amazon.com, but and uh, YouTube it's Paul Pate Animation. You can find <laughs> um, cool stuff there. Hopefully you like and. Uh, 
<laughs> and of course, the Watchmen. Yeah, and of course. Of course, the Watchmen, mm-hmm. Alan Moore, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. everybody knows. And, uh, all let's not all come in for you, second, Alan. Our second no, favorite, Paul. That's true. That's actually me, too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. You were the replacement when Paul died or was in the asylum or what was the thing? I don't know. You were the. A couple years ago, Paul McCartney actually came to my town. Really? Yeah, I went to this little wine shop. See, now he's just running cover trying to pretend that wasn't him. (laughs) I finally finished the series on Disney Plus, the Let It Be. I finally watched the last uh, part of it. It was really great. Yeah, if you guys are fans of music, too, check out Let It Be. Um, Paul check out the Beatles. Mm-hmm. The check Beatles. out the Beatles. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Beatles. Yeah, you know, the Ram Band, you know. You probably haven't heard of this band. It's a little yeah. weird band, but like, the Beatles know. were pretty good. You know, yeah. I yeah, liked okay. Beatles before they became mainstream. Yeah, I was totally into the Beatles. I was into I was them when they were the Silver Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Uh, also, like, if you guys want to check out more of Paul Pate's music, there's Peter, Paul, and Mary. He was Paul. Just, <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, oh, what? It, oh, yeah. Keeman said, "I got to be Scott tonight and tell about the art casters." Yes, oh, I yeah. Do. How do so, people find this show? How do people know where it is or when it is? It's crazy. Actually, there is a change to that, so I will let you guys know what that is right now. So, as I said, Scott Circland, uh, you guys should be checking out Circworks on YouTube if you haven't. I'm sure you have. Everybody, all of us are following Scott. He is taking a little break from YouTube. Uh, to kind of reformulate and re-strategize. And I know some of the stuff that's in the works, and I think it's going to be really cool. So, yeah. um, But uh, that also includes taking art casters off of his main channel so he can be a little more targeted specifically with um, what he's aiming for. Um, but he's still going to do art casters. It's just going to rotate between mine and Corey Kerr's channel. So if you guys haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter that's in the comments below. And that way we will uh, get messages and stuff like that. And because it's not, um, uh, I'm going to do a fake uh, version of the newsletter pitch just to mess with Scott because he's probably going to be watching this after the fact. So we do spam you all the time. We're going to just send (laughs) nonstop spam messages. Um, What if we click on the link? Yeah. uh, Be careful to click on the link because you never know where you'll end up. Um, yeah. you might end up on some weird sites with Papa bads, um, and, <laughs> and a lot of new direction albums. Um, but yeah, but make sure you sign, uh, sign up to the newsletter and stuff like that. That'll let you know whether it's going to be a mine or Corey's channel. And, uh, again, like Scott will still be in the rounds and the rotation. So it'll be like me, Corey, Scott, me, Corey, Scott, like we usually do. Um, and then aside from that, uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel, hit the bell, get notifications, all that fun stuff, and pick up Jacob's apartment in two stories, and that'll do it. So uh, thanks, guys. That was fun having you on. And uh, Thank you, Josh. Thank you for having us. Too. Thanks yeah. for pinch hitting and, and doing the guest hosting, too. Um, and we'll, Thank we'll, you very much. Yeah. Good we morning. You know what we got to do? We got to do a um, – have, like, a big, a big crazy one with all of us at some point soon. That would be fun, yeah, especially now that we've reached 365 episodes. I feel like that's a something. I feel like we should record it in a like a giant ball pit. Yeah, that's. That would be I think fun. we should have a cage match. A cage match, I could see that. Battle royal. Cage yeah, match. maybe a battle royal brisk. Or maybe we could do the. I was the wondering movie. when when is the big art casters risk tournament happening? Gary, wow. we were <laughs> just. I mean. <laughs> I didn't. All right, guys, we were about to close. Uh, I I will not fall for the risk tangent because I will keep going. But uh, but I do think we should. Here, Courtney Love, have another drink. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, Um, have a good night, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Yeah.